Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia, and I hope that you are in the Halloween spirit because today I am bringing you 13 Halloween DIYs. Three are from last year and 10 are brand new crafts that I'm very excited to show you. Some are spooky and some are really cute, so I have a good mix to fit everyone's style. Let's get started. The first DIY in today's video is this really adorable cobweb spider themed boo sign. I think this will look so cute on your front door for Halloween. This DIY is really easy and it actually only costs two dollars. So the first dollar was spent on this boo sign. It's this really cute, I think it's MDF or you know like a faux wood that the Dollar Tree uses a sign. And I'm taking some white paint. Mine is Waverly in the shade white chalk paint. And I didn't film the one section but I did distress the sign. I thought it was a little too white but you could do it really cute and use like a pink color to distress. I decided to use a dark gray to just, you know, make it a little bit spookier, but if you wanted it to be more cute than scary, you could do a bright purple or a pink. I think that'd be really cute. And this cobweb sign was a dollar at the Dollar Tree and it came with this spider. And literally all that I did was hook the boo sign onto the really cool spider web. And then I hot glued the gray spider down onto the boo sign. This is such a quick and easy DIY, but I think it looks really professional and complex, but it's really just using two items from the Dollar Tree. When I saw these adorable pumpkin treat bags at the Dollar Tree, I knew that I had to pick them up and I actually picked them up before I came up with the DIY, but this is a really quick and easy one. Of course, you could just use it as a real treat bag, but I wanted to make them into cute stuffed pumpkins. I'm filling mine with a filling that I got from the fabric store, but if you don't have any, you can just put in the Dollar Tree bags that your goods come in, any plastic bags. You can even use old computer paper, newspapers, you know, you get the idea. You can use a lot to stuff these bags. Then I stuck a cinnamon stick down into the bag and tied it with a piece of jute that came with the treat bags. Then I just trimmed off a lot of the excess area of the treat bags, but I did leave some because it acts as a nice little holder for the Spanish moss that we're going to put around it. I wanted these pumpkins to look like they belonged in a pumpkin patch, so that's why I'm adding the Spanish moss all around the top and after you've added your Spanish moss you might need to give your pumpkins a little bit of a haircut and then they are all done. I hate to pick favorites in my videos, but I think this one is my favorite. It just looks so cool and for some reason it reminds me of Phantom of the Opera. It's a really easy melting wax candle, but you don't have to worry about anything actually catching on fire because we are going to be using a fake candle and just creating the effect. So I got one of these candles at the Dollar Tree. And this technique is so easy. You are going to take your glue gun. I ended up going through, I think, three sticks of glue. You're going to need a lot of glue. And you are just going to start creating what looks like the wax dripping down the candle. There are no rules to this. The only thing that I would say is make sure that at the top, all of the wax connects. I end up going back in to fill in those spaces. I just think it looks more realistic that way when you don't have a bunch of gaps in the candle. Then once the hot glue is all dried, you can go in with your paint. I'm going to be painting my candle black. So I'm covering just the entire thing in some black paint. And I do turn my brush a bit. It's a little bit hard to get in between all of the hot glue pieces. Um, it just takes some dabbing and stippling and kind of pushing your brush into all the places so that you make sure that no hot glue has been left unpainted. And then once the paint is all dried, I removed that tab and my LED candle was ready to go. 
I love the way that this turned out. I think it looks so gothic and will fit in with lots of Halloween decor. This is one of my favorite DIYs that I made last year and I actually used an old pickle jar to create it. So when I said this was an easy DIY, I definitely was not lying. I think this might have been the fastest and easiest DIY I have ever done. All I did was take an old pickle jar and then I took a skull and I painted that completely matte black and I also painted the lid of the pickle jar black. Next up, I just hot glued the skull onto the top of the pickle jar. Now I'm taking some white paint and painting on the inside of the jar. I played around at first with painting the outside but the paint was chipping off and painting the inside was just a lot easier, didn't have to worry about any chipping and yeah, it was just easier. So that's what I decided to do. I painted the inside of the jar, not doing anything opaque because I want the little fake tea light that we're going to put in to be able to shine through. So just kind of messily paint on the inside. Lastly, I am screwing the lid with the skull back on and I have these really awesome printables that I will link below in the video description. This is the one that says bone powder. All I did was print it, cut it out, and now I am mod podging it onto the jar. The last thing I did to complete my spooky bone powder jar was add a battery operated tea light on the inside. To continue on with our gothic themed DIYs, we have this skeleton specimen jar. First, I am taking three skeleton skulls and adding some brown paint to dirty them up. These skulls looked way too new for my liking and I want my specimen jar to look like it has been sitting there for years, possibly even centuries. So if you have a power tool, this step will be extremely easy. But if you don't like me, it'll be a tiny bit more difficult. Basically what we're trying to do is make a hole in the base of the clock dome so that our battery operated lights can come through. Since I don't have a power tool, I'm just using a screwdriver and a screw to manually make that hole in the base. And after I've made that hole with the screw and the screwdriver, I'm just threading through the lights to make sure they fit. Depending on what size lights you have, you might have to make the hole a little bit larger. Now I'm taking some black paint and painting the entire base of the clock dome. After the base and the skulls have all dried, you can take your skulls and arrange them however you want on top of the base. I decided to do mine kind of like in a totem pole, so I'm taking some hot glue, adding it to the skull, and sticking it down. Now remember, I want my skull specimen jar to look like it's been hanging around in some apothecary for centuries. So it's definitely going to have some mold and maybe some things growing on it. So I'm taking some hot glue and some Spanish moss and putting that around the skulls. After I've placed all my skulls on top of one another and added all the Spanish moss that I wanted, I am threading through those battery operated lights and circling them around the skulls a little haphazardly to create a disheveled look around them. So everything seemed to be going perfectly, but it wouldn't be a Halloween DIY without a few ghosts messing up the process. So actually the three skulls was too tall and I couldn't get the top of the high clock dome to fit snugly and lock. So unfortunately we had to have a little surgery and decapitate one of the skulls. So you can see in this next clip, I am back down to only two skulls. And now that I'm down a skull, I definitely don't want anyone to be touching my skeleton specimen and causing me to possibly lose another one. So I'm adding this creepy do not touch apothecary label and I will link that below in the description box as well. I took this plastic spider ring that I got for free in one of those cobweb packages and I added it to the top of the second skull because he was feeling a little sad that he lost his buddy so he needed a friend and then I added some more moss on top. And that's all it takes to make your skull specimen jar. If you guys end up doing this DIY, please comment below on how you styled it. A new DIY that I made for this Halloween are these bubbling witches cauldrons. 
and originally I thought I wouldn't be able to do this. My Dollar Tree didn't come out with these cauldrons last year, or, you know, they didn't have them. But a good tip is when it's St. Patrick's Day time, they come out with similar cauldrons, but they're for pots of gold. So if your Dollar Tree doesn't have them this Halloween, wait until the spring, pick them up, and then maybe you can use them. But I was lucky mine did have these in stock. So I picked them up and they have flames all along the bottom and half of the flames I painted in a silver gray color and then on the other two cauldrons I painted in a green flame. I wanted my cauldrons to have a stirring spoon or you know a stirring stick in them, a ladle. So I took these wood dowels from the Dollar Tree and painted them a dark brown color. And then I balanced them on some paint bottles to dry. And while those were finishing up drying, I moved on to filling my cauldrons to make them look like they were bubbling. I took some of this stuffing that I got from the fabric store but if you don't have any of this lying around, you can also take cotton balls and just really pull the cotton balls apart. And that will also create the faux bubbling bubbles. <laughs> and then I took my miter shears and cut my wood dowels down so that they would look like they were stirring sticks in my potion. And I placed them in underneath the bubbles. You could also use the faux cobwebs that the Dollar Tree comes out with for your bubbles too. I just thought of this when I was putting on the spider ring. The spider rings come with the faux cobwebs. So I added that to two of the cauldrons and on the other two, I took these green sequins and I put them on top of the bubbles so it looked like a magical potion was brewing. Next up, I took one of the bright orange carvable pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and it gave it a more Halloween twist. So I am taking the pumpkin and transforming it. I painted it white and then I took black paint to paint the stem and all of the indentations in the pumpkin. The Dollar Tree had these fun floral picks out for Halloween and I just liked the black leaf. Originally I was going to paint a leaf that I already had black and then I realized, oh, I already have one. So I used this and I just poked it down into the foam pumpkin. Then to make it even creepier and add a small pop of color, I found these spiders at the Dollar Tree and I hate spiders, but I liked these ones because they were glittery and purple, so they didn't remind me too much of a real spider, so I was a little bit more okay with them. And I just took some hot glue and hot glued these all over my foam pumpkin. To make this Halloween sign, I actually took a Halloween card from the Dollar Tree. I thought this one was really cute. Another way that you can use cards is just pop them into a frame and you have a cute Halloween picture. But for this one, I took a small wood palette and I am just using some spray adhesive to adhere this down onto the wood palette. And that little tool is something that I got from Mod Podge. It just helps make sure there's no air bubbles. Now I am going in to the slats in my palette and I poked a hole in first with some small scissors and right now I basically made a giant nail file using sandpaper. I'm taking the sandpaper and covering a popsicle stick and I'm sticking that down into the slats and that is just sanding or filing off any of the excess bits of the card that are of course going to be left over. And after I've done all that, I wanted to add a little embellishment. I picked up these really cute bat pins from the Dollar Tree. They were so cute, but I am going to be covering their face. And I covered it entirely in black paint, so you know, it would look like a bat. And while I had my black paint out, I decided to distress my Halloween palette a little bit. So I'm just placing some black paint down into the slats where you can see the natural wood. I want that to be covered. So I'm just putting down the black paint inside each of the slats and along the top and the bottom of the wood palette. To match the orange that is in the Halloween card, I took some bright orange paint and my daughter tool and I'm creating 
two orange eyes on my bat. Then I took some hot glue and just hot glued that in the corner of our Halloween wood palette. In this DIY, I am repurposing a truck that I made in my Apple video. I will link that video above if you want to see how I painted my wood truck. I love taking items from old DIYs and repurposing them for new ones. It's a great way to not be wasteful and reuse some craft supplies. So the skeleton is going to be really our main supply in this DIY though. He is going to be driving a truck full of bones to the boneyard. So I hot glued his head into the driver's seat and put two of his arms and hands so it looks like he is driving the steering wheel. And then I just started filling up the truck with a velvet pumpkin, some other pumpkins, and lots of bones. So I just basically took scissors and chopped up our skeletons that came from the Dollar Tree and I'm just kind of having fun placing the bones all around the bed of the truck just seeing which way that I like it looking best. On the side of the truck I took one of the skeleton's arms with a hand and I hot glued that to the front. I thought it looked pretty cool and then I took my paint pen that I got from the Crafter Square section of the Dollar Tree and I just hand wrote Boneyard on the side of our truck. If the skeleton DIYs were a little too spooky for your taste, I have a really cute boo sign coming up. I'm going to be covering this wood pumpkin with some fun orange and black buffalo check paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. I always get the paper when it's four for a dollar. It's a pretty good deal. So then I just traced out my wood pumpkin and I'm cutting it out. For larger projects like this, I love using this Elmer's spray adhesive. It just is a lot less messy than the Mod Podge. And then I just laid down my cutout scrapbooking paper. And I did use this fun tool for Mod Podge. It's really great at getting out any wrinkles or air bubbles. To add some definition to my sign, I took this white chalk marker that I got from the Dollar Tree and just added a bit of definition. Then my sign had to say something and I went with boo. So I cut that out using some vinyl and then I went in with a white paint pen this time from the Dollar Tree. And again, I'm just outlining the letters. I also wanted to have a natural stem. So I took some of this dark brown paint from Apple Barrel and painted the stem of my wood pumpkin. For the finishing touch on my boo sign, I made this bow using this reddish orange ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And then I had this thinner black velvet ribbon, which I used to hold my bow together. Let me know if you guys want a bow tutorial in the future. I know in a few videos back, I did a fork bow tutorial that everyone seemed to like. So I would be happy to show you how to make this one too. I made a skull specimen cloche last year and wanted to do something using the cloche domes again from the Dollar Tree. And first up, I saw these metal tags at the Dollar Tree in very early fall time and I really thought that they looked like tombstones. So I went ahead and made it into a tombstone, taking some vinyl and creating RIP. But you could just take a Sharpie and write out RIP. And then this is going to be the back section of our scene. So I'm just hot gluing that down. Then to make it a little bit creepier, I cut off one of my skeleton's arms so it kind of looks like he is popping up from the grave. Then with a different skeleton, I'm going to have him sitting inside the cloche dome. So I'm just bending his legs and making sure that he'll be able to sit there. This white pumpkin is actually one of the wooden apples from the Dollar Tree. I just painted it white and painted the stem brown and put on a little jack-o'-lantern face so that it would look like a pumpkin and not an apple. To go behind our tombstone, I found this really cool, like spooky orange and black glitter 
floral picks. I'm not even sure what they're supposed to be. They kind of look like branches. And I hot glued those behind my skeleton. And then to fill in the cloche, I really liked this pick that was in the Halloween section at the Dollar Tree. And it had all of these little silver bobbles on it. And I just went ahead and laid that down where the skeleton was sitting. But the twigs or branches were way too tall when I decided to put the cloche down on top of it to see if everything would fit. So I had to go back in with some scissors and just trim down everything. With my branches all nice and trimmed down, I added a couple of those pieces around the tombstone. And then my next trouble was making sure that my skeleton's feet got inside the cloche so it looked like his legs were bent. And once I got those in, my cloche was complete and I love the scene that it created. The next Disney DIY is a little bit darker and it is inspired by the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World. Here are all of the supplies you'll need to make this. Next up, I'm doing a Haunted Mansion themed DIY. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite ride at Disney World or Disneyland. It's a tough tie between Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion, but I think Haunted Mansion wins just because I love all the little details and different characters within the ride. So to kind of make this Haunted Mansion looking frame, I took a framed mirror from the Dollar Tree and I just taped out the actual mirror part so I didn't actually get any of the black paint on it. And then I just took black paint and my sponge brush and I'm going over the entire outside of the mirror. I also got really bored with my scenery in 2020, as I'm sure a lot of people did. So I watched a bunch of Disney vloggers. I got very into it. I kind of lived vicariously through them. I really like Mouse Talk. I'm subscribed to their channel. And I also love Super Enthused and Diz Our Dream. Those are definitely my top faves and it's really fun to watch them and feel like you are actually inside the Disney World parks. Now I'm just taking some gray paint and dry brushing it to make this look nice and antique. I want this to look like it came from the Haunted Mansion. If I had some cobwebs, I would have put that on it. This is a cutout of Constance Hatchaway. She is a very big part of the Haunted Mansion ride over at Disney World. So of course I had to add her on this mirror with one of the things that she says I do, I did in the ride. As a last little embellishment, I took one of these picks from the Halloween section at the Dollar Tree. They came in black and silver. I really liked the subtlety of the black on black, so I went ahead and hot glued that down, and then I was done. Even if you're not that into Disney or the Haunted Mansion, this would be a great DIY to do for the upcoming Halloween season. And my last DIY for this video is this super cute, galvanized, interchangeable ghost sign. I think the coolest thing about this DIY is that the bow is attached with Velcro, so you can remove it and add a different bow, and the little ghost guys can be removed, they're only on there from the little clips, and it can be replaced with Christmas trees, bunnies, literally any ornament for every season. The first step in this DIY is actually one that I couldn't get on film. What I did was took a piece of sandpaper and sanded off all the glitter on the Beware sign. There ended up being way more glitter than I thought, so I took it outside so I wouldn't have glitter all over my house. Then I took some paint and did two coats of white paint over the top. Then I took these ghost ornaments. You can use any kind you want, pumpkins, little fall leaves, and I painted the ghosts white and then I went in with some brown paint and just contoured where their eyes and their mouths were and along the edges, so they were a little bit easier to see and looked a little bit more spooky. After my ghosts have dried, I am now clipping them into the galvanized frames. You don't have to have the exact frames, really any frames will do, even if they don't have a clip, you can buy the clip and hot glue it on. You just need something that will hold up your ghost. To make sure the galvanized frames lay flat on the beware sign that we painted, we are peeling off, I don't even know what you call this, I guess the frame stand, and then I'm using a flathead screwdriver to take off the hardware. Then I placed the three galvanized frames with my ghosts onto our painted beware sign. You could measure this to make sure it was more precise, but I just kind of eyeballed it and where I wanted the frames to go, and then I hot glued them down. I would also suggest adding a 
couple little drops of E6000 glue. When I held up the beware sign, one of the galvanized frames fell off, so I ended up adding a little bit of E6000 glue to the middle frame. To embellish the frame, I made a fun bow. You can make any kind of bow if you're choosing. I chose this black one with orange gingham, and then I added some pipe cleaners that I spun around a pen to make some wacky looking, I don't know, shapes that I wanted to add on to my bow. Now I am taking some adhesive Velcro pieces and adding that onto the beware sign and onto the bow. So the entire goal for this project was that I can change it out for every single season. So I wanted to make something where I could easily remove the bow and add on, you know, a festive red one for Christmas and change out the ghost for little Christmas trees. You can change it with hearts and a pink bow for Valentine's Day, bunnies for Easter, etc, etc. So I'm adding on this with a little bit of hot glue. I'm sure that it could have stayed on fine with just the adhesive, but since I'm going to be using this for a long time, I wanted to make sure it was extra secure with some hot glue. And you can see right here, the bow is easily removable with that Velcro piece. I hope you all enjoyed these really fun 13 Halloween DIYs. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating. Thank you.